with Coach Tony Risking Podium Performance. And today I'm going to be speaking about one of the me most misunderstood and least utilized training program variables. That is tempo. So how tempo came about basically is Australian strength coach Ian King first came up with it with a three digit uh, write down and then Canadian strength coach Charles Poliquin took that, expanded upon it and added the fourth digit to it. So what Temple basically allows us as strength and conditioning coaches and as personal trainers to be able to do is identify and decide what the training outcome is going to be from a session or from a lift. So there can, you're going to get two very different training responses from a set of 10 reps, for example. If you do a set of 10 reps and it takes you 15 seconds, that's going to have a vastly different training response than if you do a set of 10 reps and it takes you 60 or 70 seconds. That time under tension is going to accumulate over time. So I'm just going to take a moment now and remind you, if you like this video, hit that like button below and don't forget to hit that red subscribe button below. So breaking down what tempo is, is written into the four digit numbers. So in the example I'm going to use for this, we have 4, 2, X, 0. So we actually add up these three numbers to get what the total time under tension is going to be for a single repetition. In this example, it's 4 plus 2 plus X, which is explosive as fast as possible, plus 0. So you're looking at about 6 seconds of time under tension for a single repetition. So now, to break this down further as well, we need to understand what each variable here or each digit actually represents. So the first number is going to be how long it takes you to descend in a rep. So to descend. So if you're doing a squat for example or a bench press, a chin up, this is how long it takes you to go from the top of the rep down. So if you're doing a squat and you're doing three or four second uh, first digit, that's four full seconds before you get to the bottom of the rep. The second number is how long of a pause there is. So we're looking at a pause. In this example, there's a two second pause at the bottom or in the stretch position. For a chin up, that's gonna be in the full hang position. On a curl, your arm is fully straightened out. A squat, you're at the bottom. This is where you get some uh, kind of the hardest part of the lift. One of the reasons why we can add pauses onto a lift is so that we can work on starting strength or we can take the bounce out of the, for example. For the deadlift, by example, that two second pause can be situated where you're doing it one inch off the floor. You can also do it so that that two seconds is a quick two second reset on the floor before you start the next rep. So you're starting from a dead stop. Now the third number here, the X, is how quickly you lift. So how lifty, how quickly we ascend on the repetition. So in this example, you're going as fast as you can. This, in many cases, for most of the primary big lifts, you're looking at like a one to maybe two seconds to get to the top. But when we're looking at accessory lifts, such as like a hack squat, or we're doing intentionally slow lifts, there really isn't any true end rule to what we can do in terms of how long it takes the concentric or the actual lifting portion to take. Uh, for example, you could be doing hack squats where you're going five seconds down, no pause, five seconds up, just as a quick example. And now our fourth number, that is any pause that we have at the top. So we have pause, at the top or if you're thinking of something like a curl or a press down, something where you're kind of flexing, this is where you really squeeze. So if in, for example, if this number would be one or two seconds, that's just using curl as the example, you're bringing the, the implement up and you're squeezing like hell for those one to two seconds to prevent yourself from starting to go back down. Now there are many ways that we can actually manipulate these numbers. In this single example, we're taking about six seconds to do a single lift. Most of the big primary lifts for beginners, like your, I'm talking your squat, your bench, your deadlift, 
overhead pressing, uh, chin ups, even dips. We'd like to start out with like a, a, slower, a slower eccentric or slower descent into the bottom. The reason for this is for learning, getting that neural pathway going, getting the motor patterns worked out. And the eccentric, you're actually stronger when you're going down than you are when you're coming up on a lift. One of the other ways that we can manipulate these numbers is we can add a pause, we can take a pause out. We can add a pause at the, in the contracted position or we can take the pause out so that, for example, if you're doing a squat or bench press, there's no pause at the top. As soon as you finish that bench press, it's up and then right back down four seconds, two second pause and the hardest part, and then you get started again. So these are just some very simple ways that we can manipulate tempo. One of the other things or different ways of manipulating tempo is when we're doing eccentric training. So for that, I'm just going to give another quick example here for an eccentric training is we can be going anywhere from basically four all the way up to 10 seconds just on the eccentric portion. Now keep in mind when we're doing eccentric training only, we're not trying to actually lift the weight back up. That's where we're going to need assistance. We're going to need spotters. We're going to need helpers to lift the weight back up, or that's where we bring the weight down to the spotter pins. And at that point, the rep is over and we either have to strip weight off to get it back up and then put the weight back on. Or in a way that I like doing for chin ups and dips is we do the eccentric portion and then you jump back up to the top where you don't have to worry about uh, your personal strength being the limiting factor. But as I was saying before, we're stronger eccentrically than we are concentrically. That percentage can be anywhere from 125% stronger all the way up to 175% stronger. So if your max lift, for example, is 100 pounds, that's being able to lift it, you should, in theory, be able to do between 125 pounds and 175 pounds just on the eccentric portion only. Now, as I was saying, in terms of being able to manipulate these numbers more, when you're looking at that pause at the bottom of the rep, that pause will, is what takes away our elastic tension or our elastic energy, I should say. So every time your muscle works, just think if you're hopping or you're doing quick lifts, you're stronger if you rebound because our muscles have a little bit of that elastic quality that allows them to store energy and release it fairly strong. Our tendons is the primary driver of this, especially when you take a look at running and jumping. But in terms of in the weight room, we can manipulate this in another way. So a pause can be, for the most part, anywhere from one up to about six seconds. Anything past six seconds, is, you're not really getting any real strength training benefit from it. At that point, you're stretching under load but from one to six seconds, every second you're taking more and more elastic energy out. So you're gonna be looking at what your true raw concentric strength is gonna be at that point. Once you get to about four seconds of a pause in the stretch position, you're at almost 90 to 100% of your elastic energy already dissipated. So six seconds might be too long for some people, but for some people they might need that full six seconds just to get all of that elastic energy released. So from there, we take a look at manipulating our concentric speed. And if you're trying to first learn a lift, that's when you're looking. So we'll bring this over here. When we're first learning certain lifts, you want to have a higher number here. The reason for that is you're able to keep it under control. You're trying to teach the muscles to coordinate, to learn, to go, okay, I'm going in this motion. If you're just trying to go really quick, what ends up happening with just about every trainee is they lose control of the implement. By implement, I'm talking bar, barbell, your bars, your dumbbells, in some cases, kettlebells, and even cables. We want to keep the control there. Now, as we get more, as we get more strength, as we become more coordinated, as for athletes and whatnot, we're getting closer to competition. That's when we actually want to decrease this number to 
down to a one or in certain exercises, especially the Olympic lifts, they should only ever be done with an explosive tempo because you're working on rate of force development. You're not working on control at that point. You're just trying to explode and tear that weight off the floor or throw it over your head. You're not looking to be necessarily under super slow control. You can't do a clean slowly. You can't necessarily jump slowly. So that's where we have to take a look at as we get closer to competition, as we become more coordinated, as we're becoming much stronger, lower concentric tempos are actually better. Now there's a caveat to this as well. The intent matters. Even if you're taking one to two to th even three seconds to complete a lift, you're grinding it out a little bit, the intent is going to drive a lot of our training response. By, so what do I mean by this is that even though it might take you two seconds to finish a squat rep because you're maxing out, if you're intentionally putting as much effort as you can into it to lift it explosively, you're going to be using more type two muscle fibers and that is going to allow you to awaken those fibers much more powerfully. They're going to be contracting at a higher rate and you're going to become stronger in a shorter amount of time. Now for our last one here, our pause at the top of the concentric, that's where you start to see all kinds of different things here because different lifts finish in different positions. For example, on a squat, you finish at the top. Bench press, you finish at the top. Deadlift, you finish at the top. You're finishing in the strongest position where you're up at the top, you're resting in this position. When we're looking at stuff like curls, uh, even our press downs or chin ups, uh, dips for that matter, dips are a little bit funny because of uh, them being a triceps and a chest uh, exercise, but particularly on curls or a lot of flexion type exercises, so rows are included in this. That pause there allows you to really drive home that contraction. If you're looking for a hypertrophy response, uh, I remember back in at Swiss in 2015, John Meadows was talking about this uh, and uh, Charles Poliquin answered the question on what is the purpose behind the pause uh, in the contracted position and it's because it actually holds the protein on the receptor molecule which will then allow you to have a better training response and become not just stronger but stimulate for hypertrophy responses better by doing this type of thing. The other thing that I've noticed when it comes to pausing in the contracted position on stuff like a curl or a row is that it forces the body to kind of have its own like um, blood flow restriction type thing, uh, type response. So you get a much more massive pump going because the, the fluid within you, within the muscles at that point, isn't escaping as easily. Everything's being squeezed together. So that's the way that I like to look at it. Is it necessarily scientifically proven yet? I don't actually know. This is anecdotal and something that I've noticed is that squeezing in contracted positions, you get a freaking massive pump from that at times on uh, row exercises and curls particularly. All right, so now let's dive a little bit deeper into this. So the next thing that we look at when we're talking about tempo is time under tension, T-U-T. So we're gonna use a single set example for this. So to find out what the set time under tension is, first, as we discussed before, we take the four digits of our single rep we add up the numbers. So in this case, I'm using the example 4010, which is going to give us five seconds for a single rep. We multiply that. In this example, we're going to use 10 reps, and then we end up with 50 seconds. So the calculation is very simple. Rep tempo times the number of reps equals time under tension. So as I was saying before, that if a rep takes you 15 seconds or 50 seconds, you're going to get two very different training responses. So we're going to continue in this example using 4010 uh, tempo, but we're going to get a few different training responses out of it. So the first one, we're going to go with 4010, and we're going to go 12 reps. So in that example, we end up with 5 times 12. That gives us 60 seconds. So the second example we're going to use, we're going to go with 
five reps. So five by five reps, that gives us 25 seconds of time under tension. Now our third example, we're gonna go with three reps. So that gives us five times three or 15 seconds of time under tension. And our final example, we are gonna use 20 reps. So that gives us five times 20, that's 100 seconds. So as you can see, you're gonna be under tension much differently in each example when we're using 4010. But because of that, we're gonna get four different training responses. In our first example, we're gonna be ending up in what's referred to as a hypertrophy type response. So our muscle building, our fat, primary fat loss zone is up here. We're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that in a moment here. Our second one, because we end up with 25 seconds, we end up primarily in the functional hypertrophy. Our third example with 15 seconds of total time under tension. Now we're getting into relative strength. And finally, our last example of 100 seconds. Now we're getting into strength endurance. So as I said, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this. So there's four primary zones of uh, muscular adaptation in terms of weight training. You have your maximal strength, the relative strength, we have our functional hypertrophy, we have hypertrophy, and then we have strength endurance. Now, no single one of these is absolute. There's gonna be some carryover from each of these going into different zones. And there's, that's also gonna rely upon our training age. If our training age is higher, you're not gonna get the same strength response from strength endurance as you are from relative strength. If you're in a Strength, a maximum strength phase, you might get a little bit of strength endurance depending on how it's being used. But for the most part, it's gonna become relative strength, functional hypertrophy, and some hypertrophy. So the main difference between functional hypertrophy and hypertrophy is just think, this is kind of like bodybuilding muscle, uh, bodybuilding and fat loss, functional hypertrophy. Think of your combat sports, or if we wanna use another example, show without as much go, you could just keep on going, all go, very little show. You got the show and you got the go. That's just the way I've always liked to, like to think about it to break it down and make it a little bit easier. So each of these also has a corresponding uh, time variable to it. So when we're looking at hypertrophy, because this is the one that the vast majority of people in the world are really chasing, is you're looking at 40 to 70 seconds of total time under tension per set. When we're looking at functional hypertrophy, you're gonna notice a little trend that starts to happen right now. Functional hypertrophy, we go 20 to 40 seconds. Now, as I said before, these are not absolute numbers. And then we get into our Relative strength is basically your zero to 20. Now, this can also be broken down a little bit further when you're looking at max strength. That's when you're looking basically zero to 10 seconds because that's when you're maxing out. That's your, uh, you're going balls to the wall at that point. And strength endurance is essentially 70 plus. So anything over 70 seconds, for the most part, you're looking at strength endurance. As I was saying before, these do mix in with one another. 
you can get maximum strength from relative uh, from strength endurance. You can get functional hypertrophy from hypertrophy and vice versa. The reason for this is we have different muscle fiber types and they respond differently to different training stimuli. So from this, we can also take a look at that first example I said of a single rep or a single set taking 15 seconds versus a single set taking 60 seconds. So if you're doing bench press, for example, and you're doing 10 reps and you're just going as quick as you can and it takes, and you're doing 150 pounds or you're doing 200 pounds, for example. Well, if you did that for that all 10 and it took you 12 to 15 seconds roughly, well, for the most part, you're working time or attention wise on maximum strength. You're not going to get what most people think from a 10 rep set of hypertrophy. You're going to be getting more maximum strength. Now, if we take that and we slow the rep down, even just using our example here of 4010, you end up falling right in to 40 to 70 seconds. You fall right into the prime zone for hypertrophy gain. All right, so as we can see, just by manipulating a single training variable of tempo, we impact our total time under tension of a set, which is going to, as we go through a workout, is going to keep on compounding. We're able to now dictate what the training response is going to be from a session, from an exercise, from a single set, much more accurately by following tempo and putting it into our programs, whether it's for our clients where we can get better results from them or ourselves where we can get our own results much faster. You don't necessarily want for somebody who's doing fat loss to be focusing primarily on relative strength. It's going to take us much longer to get the cumulative time under tension to elicit the fat loss response as opposed to let's go into hypertrophy and we're able to get much more lactic buildup, which is going to cause us to use more energy and we're going to get, lose fat much more efficiently. Now, if we're trying to get much stronger, we don't want to be doing 30 reps. We want to be doing one to five reps so that we can get our strength higher much faster because we're going to be using absolute loads that are much higher. So remember, like and subscribe to this video and leave a comment. Coach Tony, risking podium performance, embrace your potential. And don't forget, start using some tempo in your programming and you're gonna reap the, resort, the rewards.